Is in Cloud9 Eclipse are getting set up for Game 3, and as they prepare to jump into the lobby, I want to welcome Dexter back to the desk. So that game started out with some pretty incredible jungle play. Ko yeah. did an amazing job starting that one out. It basically decided to win the game. Um, Evelyn was at least the matchup is kind of equal, but Evelyn has the slight advantage, and if Evelyn gets ahead a, bit, a tiny bit, then the damage is too overwhelming for Elise to handle. Like even with mm -hmm. all the peel and CC, Elise can't really out damage Evelyn, especially after the Elise nerfs. It's really much into Evelyn's favor, and if Evelyn ever gets a chance to just be in the enemy jungle and one on one Elise, then there's no coming back pretty much because you can't help you like you can't call your teammates from for help or something. Otherwise, they will lose the lane. So. You have to make the sacrifice in the jungle and have an underfarmed Elise compared to an Evelyn that always has the omnipresent pressure and the whole thing. So it kind of decided the whole game, to be honest, because Elise is supposed to be an early game jungler. She scales into late game, but uh, yeah, Evelyn is better in late game than Elise. So and Evelyn had the game the whole like the advantage the whole time. So yeah, kind of snowball from there. And even the dual lane was like really crazy. There wasn't a lot of jungle intervention. No, like no, no. maybe that was the um, Evelyn being invisible, but like. Yeah. NIP's dual lane got destroyed. Maybe it's because of the first game, or the confidence is gone or something, but uh, Evelyn pressure on bot lane is huge. Like, when I play Evelyn, and we play against Evelyn, it's like completely different on bot lane, simply because of the pressure you provide. You have no idea where Evelyn is, and if you fall behind against Evelyn and don't get those deep pink wards, uh, green wards, usually the support just walks into the jungle and set up the wards at uh, yeah. double golems or race, and the jungler usually has the wolves or something. But it didn't happen this game, so Evelyn had complete control over the whole game, pretty much. Plus, she was always in the red side jungle, she was counter and there, jungler. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I yeah. feel like we can't put too much blame <laughs> on them. But <laughs> nah, it's they also knew like Elise is never gonna help us because no. she was level two at like at four. That was pretty much the story of the game. Yeah. I mean, what what would you do? Let's say you go into the situation where you go with that blue side late invade yep. and it gets turned around on you. But behind. At that point, he's only a little bit behind. Yeah. But he's got to worry. This this Evelyn knows that I'm a little bit behind. He's probably gonna counter jung continue countering jungling. Yeah. That's where it really snowballed when he went for the second blue. Wants, so yeah. what would you do instead? Well, there's not much you can do if the like jungle is really snowballing. If you have yeah. an unfavorable matchup like this, at least with Evelyn, and you know Evelyn has the advantage in the jungle, it's really hard to come back. But what I would have done is, um, I would have probably tried to force Evelyn into lane to give vision on her at least, and force her to come. Like I would have probably went bot lane and try lane it until Evelyn shows up, mm -hmm. and then so I give my other laners, like my solo laners, the opportunity to do, to do something, mm -hmm. or what, or get back in the game somehow. Yeah, at least That's you relieve some kind of pressure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you don't, like, if you just try to duel the Evelyn in the jungle and you go into the jungle, get chunked and have to recall again, he knows it. And then every three lanes play aggressive, plus Evelyn pressure, plus dive potential on every lane pretty much. It's, uh, there's not, there's not much you can do. So. so there's one thing that he did where he bought a pink ward. Like you have very little money because he's not getting any jungle camps and he bought a pink ward and he tried to defensively ward yeah. on his red side. Pink ward doesn't help against Evelyn. It's, uh, if I'm honest, the game was over when uh, he was in the red side jungle. <laughs> yeah, <it laughs> when he took it, it when he took when he took every camp over and over again yeah. without getting anything back and no gold, and then he invested gold into a pink ward that doesn't even do much. Then it's kind of yeah, it's kind of over. Like I would just probably go walk into a lane, try to get experience, and try to get the Evelyn down so my team can maybe catch up on other lanes and then mm. wait for the vision to fade out. And that's the only thing you could do, yeah. Possibly so. Yeah. So then we talk about some of the other matchups and, and kind of how the yeah. game played out. Of course, it ended, you know, mid thirty minutes in the yeah. game, pretty short. Um, basically, Jax got ahead in this isolated matchup. And and the thing is, like, I feel like the Evelyn was spotted a fair bit just because he kept revealing himself, killing the camps off. So like, mm -hmm. the the Jax was beating Shivana in the isolated matchup. Yeah. Um, mid lane was actually going pretty equal as well. Like, it seems like no one on NIP got their footing. No, it's. If they they just farm and try to do something, but the mm -hmm. jungle backfired horribly. So yeah. the jungler couldn't do anything. And top lane, Shivana was the Jax. It's like I think it's equal in the first levels at like level nine or something. And then slowly, Jax when he when Jax gets like one or two items, it's it highly swings into his favor. Yeah, since both has t had TP, Jax has the advantage on Shivana pretty much because uh, Jax with TP is way better for split pushing because he can just force her out and can take towers better than Shivana can. And there was nothing on the bottom side of the map to TP to for uh, Shivana for Zoro Zero, so he couldn't really do any plays. And if he decided to TP bot lane to help them, then he would have taken the in at top lane. 
So it's yeah. With Evelyn being in the top lane jungle too, it's like yeah, you can't really do anything then. So I feel that uh, the picks and bans were okay for both teams, but okay. the first invade like you need to do something at level one. You can't just do it. Uh, you need to have something prepared and. Yeah, I mean, they tried something, but uh, it backfired this game, and sometimes you have to accept it, so... Sure. There's actually one thing in, in the early game, you mentioned it early on, about like, yeah. well, maybe get a try lane, get her to focus, yeah. get Evelyn to show her face somewhere. Yeah. Both teams actually set their dual lanes to go top lane at the very start of the game. From the invade and the, and the defense, actually, both of them. Um, was that, in your opinion, was that was that C9E guessing that NIP was going for 2-on-1 and matching it, or were they both looking for 2-on-1 and it, it, it turned around? Um, yeah, I guess C9 guessed it correctly and wanted a 2-on-2, two two. so mm -hmm. yeah. But the thing is, uh, even if it doesn't turn out a 2-on-2 two two or 1-on-1, one one, mm -hmm. Evelyn is way like Evelyn is better than Elise in 1-on-2 setups, simply really? because Evelyn has more, pre like, faster clear speed, she gets level 3 earlier, she can dive way earlier and has like 20 seconds clear speed or something on Elise if she doesn't get a leash, and then you have the E from Evelyn, you can just E a creep and attack the tower with more attack speed. And it takes it helps a lot in early game for the tower, so you okay. win the tower race. Wow. Okay, so I do want to move forward though. You you know these guys on NIP yeah. personally. Yeah. Um, after receiving two losses and a best of five, do these guys tilt? What's the mentality like? Because uh, they're looking forward at the next games. They they want to try and move on from these last <laughs> games, but also they can't make the same mistakes. Well, I played a best of five once against Fnatic with them, mm -hmm. and it didn't turn out well after the first loss. <laughs> <laughs> so I know how they feel. I know that they're tilting already, but at mm -hmm. the same time, there's not much on the line except prize money. Yeah. They already seeded. Like, it doesn't have to do anything with seeding or something. It's just who can get the Challenger title or the, the Coke Series title, yeah. and who gets more money. So, I mean, it's still something to play for, but uh, I guess after getting too old already, it's really hard to come back and... Yeah, I don't think they have the mentality to pull like three victories in a row. So wow. mm. I have, I guess I have to give it to C9. And yeah, they played pretty well. And they, especially their jungler played good this game. All right, Dexter, thank you very much. I suppose I do want to challenge you on that point. Just, to, just to say that like you fight, <laughs> you fight to not get picked earlier on. The earlier you get picked, the harder your opponent is. So I suppose the stronger you look, the the easier road into LCS. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Basically, he's saying they're fighting to try and impress LCS teams and say like so they don't fight pick millennium us. basically. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, C9 doesn't play with their jungler in LCS, and True. he's the star player probably, so <laughs> yeah, it's hard, but yeah, Deny, like, Deny looked a lot weaker, and mm. Reason Gaming too, than those two teams, so it's probably still unchanged how wow. teams pick them. Okay, well, Dexy, thank you very much.